الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله خالق كل شيء الحمد لله فاطر السماوات والأرض الحمد لله الرزاق ذي القوة المتين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله تفرد بالربوبية والألوهية هو الله الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفؤا أحد وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبد الله ورسوله الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونحن بأعمالنا على ذلك من الشاهدين من يطع الله ورسوله وأولي الأمر من المؤمنين فلا مضل له ومن يعص الله ورسوله وأولي الأمر من المؤمنين فلا هادي له ومن يتولى الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا فإن حزب الله هم الغالبون and sisters in Islam. Allah states, أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم بغير حق إلا أن يقولوا ربنا الله ولولا دفع الله الناس بعضهم ببعض لهدمت صوامع وبيع وصلوات ومساجد يذكر فيها اسم الله كثيرا ولينصرن الله من ينصره إن الله لقوي عزيز صدق الله القوي العزيز العظيم These ayat relate to us the following meanings Permission has been granted to those been aggressed upon and Allah is truly able to come to their support they have been expelled from their homes and from their lands without just Justification. The reason 
Babylon. They were uprooted. Is the fact that they acknowledged Allah to be their sovereign. They stated, they made it known, they made it known that Allah is their Lord and their superior. And if it wasn't for this type of aggression that is inflicted on these subjects of Allah, then it would have become a matter of history that places that are designated as a recluse or as a retreat or as a center or as a headquarter for the purposes of designating Allah the sovereign of life and the world. And Allah is certainly going to come to the rescue and the support of those who are standing and fighting to make Allah the sovereign of life and world. For Allah is almighty and Allah is the source of power. How can human beings receiving these messages from Allah, how can they succumb to the forces that come to bear upon them? It shall never be the case when Muslims surrender committed Muslims surrender due to acts of aggression to these aggressors themselves. أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ has been granted to these uprooted people who are the subjects of these types of aggression. They have been authorized to fight back and repel the use of force with counter-force. Where did this permission come from? Were the Muslims advised to go to the United Nations for permission? Were the Muslims told that they had to procure armaments and support from the United States or the Soviet Union to launch their counter wars and their counter offenses. Permission has been given by Allah by everything that is related to Allah as if permission is coming from all directions
protections أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا Permission is granted to them an open, unlimited license to fight back in these conditions. أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا They have been aggressed upon. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ And indeed, Allah is very capable of coming to their help. Allah is capable of offering them whatever they need, not the superpowers, not the same people who are responsible for these aggressive policies and wars against the Muslims. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will support this aggressed upon party whenever it is and wherever it is. to him for his succor and for his protection. الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍّ إِلَّا أَنْ يَقُولُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Without any grounds, they have been expelled from their domains. For what reason? For the reason that they said our power is Allah. Our administrator of affairs is Allah. And not the outside, worldly, limited powers that want to play the role of Allah in man's life. Muslims today and you will find that they have become the people who have been aggressed upon. They have become the people who have been uprooted. They have become the people who have been expelled from their lands. They have become the people who are the subjects of intertwining policies of aggression. Allah, not a human being, is saying to these subjects, to these Muslims, permission has been given to you to fight back. And from among the multitudes of these Muslims, the process of fighting back is already in motion. For nine years, the Soviets have entered illegally 
illegally in an unwarranted fashion without any lawful justifications a Muslim land after dominating the Muslims of Central Asia for decades they move into the Muslim land of Afghanistan and think that they will seize that portion of the Muslims' lands and incorporate it into their empire. The going hasn't been easy for these aggressors during these years. 40,000 aggressors have been killed not by relying upon the Pakistani government not with relying upon the Saudi Arabian government, not with relying upon the United States or the rest of the enemies of Islam. They manage to make out of their homelands the graveyard of 40,000 Soviet aggressors. At the beginning, of this episode, the Soviets threw Muslims into this war on their side from Central Asia. And then, when they came to realize that it is very difficult for these Muslims to execute the orders of their commanders. They rescinded that policy. They withdrew the bulk of these Muslim contingents and they replaced them with their own kind from Europe and from the Asian parts that are occupied by them to carry on this war. And they thought that these hapless and helpless Muslims could not resist the military might that came to bear on their lives. They thought it would be a matter of months or a couple of years at the most and everything will be under control. They launched this aggression and this fact has to be repeated because of the disinformation that takes hold of the regular mind around us. Initially, this aggression and occupation of this Muslim land was a result of people standing up and saying, Rabbuna Allah. These people may not have been geographically positioned in Afghanistan, but the superpowers, they know no geographical limitations or boundaries. They immediately and instinctively caught wind of the fact that Islam once it is spoken within a context will spread naturally within that context. And so the war that came to be against 
once the Muslims in Afghanistan was an immediate and direct reaction to the Muslims, their brothers and sisters who stood up and said, Rabbuna Allah. And hence the occupation was set into motion. And because of the short-sightedness of many Muslims today, one issue became two issues. And people began to think under the influence of the media that the issue of Afghanistan is separate from the issue of Iran. Not knowing that they are intimately and intrinsically the same issue. The Muslims in Afghanistan are akin to the Muslims in Iran. It was necessary for these superpowers to move in the way they did in an overall scheme of combating the Muslims who took a stand and said, Rabbuna Allah, which ignited all of these developments into motion. الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍّ إِلَّا أَنْ يَقُولُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ This issue was misconstrued by two opinions and both were wrong. The first opinion is that priority should be given to facing the war that the United States has imposed on this area of the world. And the other counter opinion is that priority should be given to the Soviet imposed war on that part of the world. People who repeat any of these two opinions trying to make separate issues out of them lack the understanding of the Quran and lack the understanding of the conspiracies of this against Islam. In nature, it is one war. In nature, it is one policy against the Muslims who broke loose the chain out of the chains of imperialism with its eastern and western manifestations. As a result of that war in the land of Afghanistan, 40,000 occupiers were killed. Over 3,000 tanks were destroyed. Over 400 planes were shot down. And you have to acknowledge that it was not done with sophisticated weapons. The United States tries to move in to take credit for some of the successes that are achieved by these Muslims. And this is a false representation of the truth. The United States does not want the Muslims in Afghanistan to say, Rabbuna Allah. 
The same way the Soviets do not want the Muslims in Iran to say Rabbun Allah. Both the United States and the Soviet Union have something in common. They want the Muslims to choose between a power in Russia or a power in America. These should be the gods of the Muslims, not Allah. The war continues up until this day, but with a significant difference between nine years ago and now. Nine years ago, there were propaganda exchanges between the Russians and the Americans. Political acrobatics came to play. President Carter at the time said that he's boycotting the Olympics. And he said to the farmers in the Midwest, that they would not be able to sell their wheat to the atheists. And after nine years of jihad, by these Muslims in this area, not only by the Muslims in Afghanistan, but also by the Muslims in Iran, challenging these false deities, in the form of the United States and the Soviet Union, Gorbachev comes to this country and he speaks as if they were on friendly terms with his counterpart Reagan. And it is reported that they have exchanged messages on this new year. Wishing their respective populations of a prosperous future. Their nature has not been exposed by the Muslims sitting back or playing politics. Their nature has been exposed after this relentless jihad. The Muslims in Afghanistan did not stay there for a couple of months fighting and then leave, or for a few years and then leave. They continued. And this, to a certain degree, is reminiscent of the position that other Muslims are in. They probably thought the same thing of the Muslims concerning the Islamic center across the street. It will only be a few months or a couple of years and the momentum will fall. People will lose interest and then it is all over. The issue here in Washington, D.C. is organically related to the issues of the Muslims in other places of the Muslim world. Muslims are not going to wither away. Muslims are not going to lose momentum. Muslims have ascertained that their way out of these catastrophes of aggression is to take a stand for Allah. قُلْ هَلْ أَعِذُكُمْ بِوَاحِدَةٍ أَنْ تَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ مَثْنَى وَفُرَادَى ثُمَّ تَتَفَكَّرُوا The issues of this Islamic condition today shall only proceed to a more confident and fruitful future وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ We know 
that this type of position is not going to be received with acceptability by the superpowers or by their allies. But we have no choice in this affair if we are the subjects of Allah. وعد الله الذين آمنوا منكم وعملوا الصالحات ليستخلفنهم في الأرض كما استخلف الذين من قبلهم وليمكنن لهم دينهم الذي ارتضى لهم وليبدلنهم من بعد خوفهم أمنا يعبدونني لا يشركون بي شيئا ومن كفر بعد ذلك فأولئك هم الفاسقون الله has promised those who are committed to him and those who work has promised those who are committed to him and those who work out their commitment in the form of works and deeds that he shall cause them to inherit the affairs of this world as he has caused those before them to do likewise and he shall change their status from one of apprehension and fear to one of security and peace this is the condition that all Muslims find themselves in today by their struggle and perseverance and patience and steadfastness they have exposed the liars of this world a Christmas tree is on the desk of Gorbachev during this holiday season an atheist with a Christmas tree on his desk to be flashed around the world for the attention of everyone who can see this may be a symbolic picture but to the Muslims who have been fighting against world aggression and world arrogance it proves that there is no difference in substance or in style between the United States and the Soviet Union. It proves what the Prophet has stated to his followers, Millatul Kufri Wahida, brothers and sisters in Islam. This jihad of the Muslims is only in its beginning stages. And those who dread the idea of fighting for the cause of Allah have no place among the Muslims. And those who are weak and fragile in their commitment it only takes the determination of those who are in the front line to bring them in line with the rest of the Muslims. And this is done for the purpose, for the cause, and in the direction of Allah. It is not done for people to watch. It is not done for people to write or speak about, although they may do that and more than that. It is done for the attention of Allah. And if you are cognizant of the attention of Allah in your life, it doesn't matter what people think of you. It doesn't matter how people think of you. If your trust is in Allah, 
And the Prophet alayhi wa alihi wa salatu wa salam said, Al-Jihad maadun ila yawm al-Qiyamah. Camp David cannot undo this jihad. The meeting of the superpowers cannot undo this jihad. The meeting of all the powers of the world that are on the, sh the side of the shaitan cannot undo this jihad. It shall continue vigorously, vigorously, and rigorously until the day of resurrection, until the day of accountability. Sadaqa Rasulullah. والجهاد ماض إلى يوم القيامة ادعوا الله سبحانه وأنتم موقنون بالإجابة واستغفروه واستنصروه إنا لننصر رسلنا والذين آمنوا في الحياة الدنيا ويوم يقوم الأشهاد يوم لا تنفع الظالمين معذرتهم ولهم اللعنة ولهم سوء الدار والله ناصركم نعم المولى ونعم النصير الحمد لله الذي هدى وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه أولي النهى والتقى If we look at the internal condition of ourselves and if we have to look at it in the streets of Washington D.C. then that is what we will do because we are forced to do so. The Muslims, even those who accept to separate the aggression of the Soviet Union from the aggression of the United States, those people who glorify the jihad of the Muslims in Afghanistan. Those rulers of the Arabian Peninsula and the Gulf area, don't they have brothers and sisters in Islam? Five to six million of them out of a population of 18 million have been kicked out of their lands, displaced, wandering on the surface of the earth. The rest of the able-bodied Muslims are fighting a life and death war against the communists and the atheists of Russia and Saudi Arabia. Kuwait and these other governments that claim that they are the upholders of the Quran and a bulwark against Soviet expansionism. Why do we find them financing the war? against people who stood up and said Rabbun Allah in Iran and they are hard pressed to finance a war against those who deny the existence of God in their lives. It is obvious that the people who have been oppressed in Afghanistan are Muslims and the power that has occupied that integral part of Muslim lands is anti-Islamic, even according to their own ways of thinking. Then why is it, instead of spending one billion dollars in support of an American-sponsored aggression, even if they think 
that this is an area of doubt and they can't make up their minds of whether Shiites are Muslims or non-Muslims then it is obvious for them that those who are living in Afghanistan are Muslims according to their book according to their scholars according to the way they think then why can't they pay at least one billion dollars a month to these Muslims? It is the hypocrisy, brothers and sisters in Islam, when they claim that they are the defenders of Islam and they are hard pressed to buy the necessary weapons that these Muslims need or train the Muslims from Afghanistan at their army bases, at their military bases, and to finance their jihad, or accept them as equals in their own countries. But that is not the case, because they are on a short leash from the Shaytan al-Akbar. A Shaytan dictates to the rulers of Arabia and the Gulf what to do. And the Shaytan al-Akbar is not fond of the Muslims in Afghanistan. During a whole year, the amount of coverage on the three major networks during their news periods was not more than an hour combined all together throughout a full year when millions of people are displaced when they are waging war against what was called once an evil empire and they only receive this minuscule coverage, it is hypocrisy at its peak when people are led to believe by these hypocrites that there's a real issue dividing the Soviet Union and the United States or that there is a real issue dividing the Muslims in Afghanistan from the Muslims in Iran. This is one cause, it is one issue, and Allah has stated it for everyone who is willing to listen. أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ وَقَدِيرٌ it is not the meetings in Switzerland. It is not the representation of other governments that is going to solve the issues and the affairs of the Muslims. The United States and the Soviet Union have worked out an arrangement whereby they want to return the corrupt king into that land. Both of them have agreed upon causing this king to return from his self-imposed exile to reap the benefits of nine years of Muslim blood and tears. Those years are over when Muslims struggled and fought in Algeria in other parts of the Muslim lands. And then the corrupt politicians came and they sat on the throne that they established upon the jihad of the Muslims. We are not 30 years younger than today. We are 30 years mature than we were in the past. We are 40 years mature when we were in those years. A Vahir king, a Vahir shah, or any of the other corrupt rulers are totally outside of the question.
If he shall come to rule, he also shall receive the same as this Najib is receiving and as his predecessors have received because these Muslims are saying, Rabbuna Allah, wa lawla daf'ullah inna sabahdahum bibad, wa huddimat sawami'u wa bi'ahu wa salawatu wa masajid, yudhkaru fi asmullahi kathira, wa la yansuranna allahu ma yansura. Allah is going to come to the help of those who are assisting His cause by way of their lives. وَلَا يَنْصُرَنَّ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَنْصُرَهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيًّا عَزِيزٌ And as to these feeble-minded politicians and to these corrupt rulers, their days are a matter of a limited amount of time. The Muslims are saying, Rabbun Allah, in Afghanistan, in Iran, in occupied Palestine, in Egypt, in North Africa, in the whole of Africa, in Southwest Asia, in the whole of Asia, they are saying, Rabbun Allah, wa man yatawakkal ala Allah, فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ الْأَمْرَةِ رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبْرًا وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا وَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ رَبَّنَا عَلَيْكَ تَوَكَّلْنَا لَا عَلَى أَمْرِيكَ وَلَا عَلَى رُوسِيَّا وَإِلَيْكَ أَنَبْنَا لَا عَلَى أَمْرِيكَ ولا على روسيا وإليك المصير لا إلى أمريكا ولا إلى روسيا اللهم بك نحاول وبك نصاول وبك نقاتل ربنا افتح بيننا وبين قومنا بالحق وأنت خير الفاتحين ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للقوم الكافرين ربنا نجنا برحمتك من القوم الظالمين اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك فإن عبادك هم الصالحون اللهم اجعلنا من حزبك فإن حزبك هم المفلحون اللهم اجعلنا من جندك فإن جندك هم الغالبون اللهم اجعلنا من أوليائك فإن أولياء لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون وصل اللهم على محمد وآل محمد والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر في اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعوا مع الله أحدا إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا ملقوتا ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون
Cool. 